Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome to another episode of How They Do That. Well, today we're joined by photographer David Bean, and he's going to show us how he made this photo of Leanne Rhymes. But before we start, let me tell you a little bit about David. David is a lifestyle and celebrity photographer. He's shot people like Taylor Swift, Brad Paisley, of course, Leanne Rhymes, Ja Rule, and supermodel Nikki Taylor. Well, welcome to the show, David. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem. This is going to be great. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and about your photography. Well, um, I have been shooting only for about five years full time. Uh, before that, I owned a graphic design firm for 10 years. Um, I shoot pretty much two things. I shoot uh, lifestyle photography for advertising and I shoot musicians and celebrities. And I've really just tried to focus on those two things alone. So if you go to my website, you'll see one to the left and one to the right. Um, and I love them both. They're my two favorite kind of things to shoot. Um, sometimes we can intermingle them and I shoot celebrities for advertising. So it's really fun. Well, that's awesome. And you're in Nashville, Tennessee, which is the heart of country music. So obviously you have access to a lot of uh, country music stars, which is always fun. Well, tell us uh, about your equipment that you use in the studio every day, your cameras and lenses and lights and things. I shoot primarily with two cameras, the Canon 1DS Mark III and the Canon 5D Mark II. The uh, Mark III is by far and away my favorite camera. I barely ever use the Mark II except for video and some behind the scenes stuff. Actually, my wife uses it for some stuff, but uh, I love the 1DS Mark III. It's my favorite. I use um, Profoto uh, Acute Lighting. I have the, uh, the Acute D4 ring flash, Acute uh, heads. Uh, I have some Profoto modifiers like uh, Beauty Dishes and Octobanks and things like that. I also uh, use uh, Alien Bees. Um, for fill lights and back lights and even for the main lights sometimes as well. I really, really like them. I think that they're highly underrated. Well, um, I've noticed in your images uh, that you are what I call a master of the background. And what I mean by that is, uh, as a photographer, I find most of the time it's pretty simple to get your subject clearly in focus and well composed, but the background, especially in environmental portraiture, can be a real beast. You seem to master it. So is that something that you plan in advance uh, or are you just good at composing images in the field? Well, I th really think it comes a lot from my graphic design background. Um, as a designer, you know, I had to create uh, something out of nothing. Like you start with just a blank screen, you know, or a blank piece of paper, and you've got to create a world. And so I've kind of brought that over into my photography, and I like to kind of create a scene. I mean, I know there's a lot of very talented people who shoot on, on you know, seamless backgrounds and just, you know, sight walls and things. And, you know, I just kind of prefer to kind of tell a story, create a scene, um, create something out of nothing. And that involves going to Home Depot and Lowe's and furniture stores and fabric stores. And, I mean, before every shoot, I'm shopping. I'm buying props. And, you know, I've just got way too much stuff in my garage and my studio um, that I use. But it, um, I like to, without making that the focus, I like to make sure the subject is always the focus. But I like to, you know, I like to... Um, tie it all together in, in some kind of story rather than it just being kind of this bland thing so okay well also I've noticed in your shots you have a lot of depth uh, and environmental atmospheric depth and what I mean by that is you have uh, a foreground that often is out of focus you've got a crisp um, subject the background is you know a shallow depth of field but we're just pulled in by the colors by lights or things hanging around the image uh, do you, again, plan all of that stuff out? How do you go about um, with your workflow? What's your strategy of making sure that we are pulled right in and we have that three-dimensional uh, feel to your images? Well, for one, I am a huge fan of long lenses. I, I mean, I do shoot 24 millimeters sometimes, but um, I'm a big fan of long lenses. And when you use long lenses, things get compressed and things get out of focus. And that's just the kind of way I like it. I like separation. I, I mean, there's always... A time for a shot where everything's kind of in focus but I like to kind of separate the subject from the environment because it, even I, I do build these kind of you know crazy get ups and backgrounds and sets and stuff and I don't want them to get lost in them so I I do need that kind of that compression that separation and um, I just don't like being close to the subject I like kind of let, giving them some breathing room and you know giving them their distance anyway and so the farther away I get the longer the lens it just makes everything really nice and just compressed really well I like it a lot 
Well, let's get to the heart of the interview, and that is the Leanne Rhymes shot that you took with the uh, leaves and stuff around her. I noticed you had another shot that looks very similar to that of Cody Bender. Is, uh, did you light those the same way, um, or are those two different lighting setups? Those are two drastically different lighting setups. Um, I believe I shot the Cody Bender one first. At my studio, there was a dumpster outside, and they were gutting the first floor, and they were throwing away all kinds of stuff, and I saw all these... Um, metal things just in the dumpster. I went and grabbed them, hung them from the ceiling, and I tried lighting that shot with strobes, and it just, it looked too perfect, it looked too clean or whatever, so I turned the strobes off and I just kind of dialed down the, the uh, shutter speed, and this was under our skylight at the studio. Um, the Leanne Rhymes one was complete opposite, total technical overkill. That, there's a silver wall in my studio that is like the most insanely hard thing to shoot. People have tried to shoot in that silver wall and failed miserably and have only seen a couple times that that wall has been shot successfully and I was so proud of myself that I was able to pull this off because that wall is so highly reflective if you shoot it you're gonna get this giant white just blown out thing behind you no matter how you try to flag it or whatever so what I did was I put um, strip lights which are basically soft boxes but they're tall and thin um, about 15 degrees, almost um, almost like right next to her face, because if I threw any light on that wall, or too much light, it was going to just turn white, and it would just kind of overexpose. So I put these strip strip banks like on both sides of her, about 15 degrees. Then I uh, you know tried that, it looked good. I wanted some rim lighting from behind, so I took my um, Profoto uh, ring light, which I never use as a ring light. I always use as a backlight. I've always, I use that ring light mainly for rim lighting and stuff. I just love the way it looks. And then I took the beauty dish, which is kind of like a ring light, on the other side. So I've got a beauty dish and a ring light 45 degrees behind her for rimming her and rimming the, uh, rimming the, uh, the leaves. Um, some of it spills onto the wall, just enough. And then I've got the two um, Chimera strip banks in front of her that slightly bleed onto the wall. And then I don't remember if I drug the shutter or not, but... Um, yeah, and the thing about that photo is her skin looks flawless. I mean, it looks like it's been highly, highly retouched. There's a tiny bit of retouching on her skin, but not much. That like, everything you see there is pretty much straight out of the camera, as far as like the sheen and the shine and everything. So, well, that's phenomenal. Thanks for all that information. Well, I've noticed that you've also added wedding photography to your uh, list of things that you do. Tell us a little bit about how you got into wedding photography. Well, it's really interesting. Um, I partnered with a, a girl, Kelly Trontel, who's a friend of mine, and I had always thought wedding photography was pretty lame until she kind of introduced me to uh, a really artsy, creative side of it. And so it kind of got me excited, and it's just a side thing. Neither one of us really need to do it. It's just a side project for both of us, so um, it's been fun. Awesome. And as an extension of that, uh, you're doing a uh, wedding photography workshop. You're actually calling it a retreat in Montana this summer. Uh, I believe it's in August. Uh, tell us about the retreat and what's going on there and how it can help other wedding photographers. It's basically a photo retreat where uh, for three days all expenses are covered, your meals, your lodging, um, everything. It's at this gorgeous, gorgeous Whitefish, Whitefish Lodge in Whitefish, Montana. And uh, it basically, it's kind of like a workshop. We teach you a few things, but basically we teach, we give you tools um, to go out and do these things yourselves. And so we team you up with other people. We uh, give you, it's kind of like maybe apprentice. We give you projects to work on, and then you go out and you do it. You shoot these things, you work on these projects, and you come back, we critique them, we tell you what you did right, what you did wrong. It's kind of more along the lines of um, empowering you to kind of teach yourself, not just uh, sit, stand there and lecture you for, you know, eight hours. Well, terrific. That's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully a lot of people will show up for that. Well, thanks for joining us today, David. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Um, always good to talk to you, Mark. You bet. And uh, I wish I could come join you in Montana. That's where I grew up. So it's going to be a, a blast. Well, remember, if you have any questions about photography or uh, videography, you can send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. And for more of David Bean's pictures, go to the Adorama Learning Center. We've posted some there. And we also will have a link to his uh, wedding workshop retreat so you can find out more information about that. We'll see you next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.